Hello, how are my fantastic fourth graders? Man, it's kind of chilly outside, so I had my husband come in here and build me a fire, and so I thought, you know what, I'll sit here by the fire and read to you guys this evening. Um, I want to do a few shout outs to Colton and Logan and Hayden and Bree and Ava. Thank you guys so much for making comments on the story in Google Classroom. I'm glad that you're enjoying the story. I'm going to start and look back at chapter 20 and read just a little bit before we start chapter 21 and then 22. I'll read two chapters today. <clears throat> Your parents are just trying to do what's best for you, said Carla. A lot of people think counselors don't belong in schools. She shrugged. I guess they're afraid I might fill your head with all kinds of crazy ideas. Chapter 21. Hello, Bradley, said Carla. It's a pleasure to see you today. I appreciate you coming to see me. She held out her hand. I punched myself in the eye, he said as he walked past her. He didn't want her thinking someone else gave it to him. I I'm the only one who can, who can beat me up. Oh, did it hurt? She asked. No, he said, sitting at the round table. Nobody can hurt me, not even me. She sat across from him. She was wearing a light blue shirt with yellow mice running all over it. The shirt was the same color as her eyes. The mice were the same color as her hair. I, I, I wanted to hit somebody, he explained as he, he, he stared at her shirt. But, but if I hit another kid, I would have gotten in trouble, so I hit myself. Well, why did you want to hit somebody? Because I hate him. Who? Everybody. Well, is that why you hit yourself? Do you hate yourself? He didn't answer. He thought it was another one of her trick questions. Do you like yourself? She asked. He didn't trust that question either. Maybe the reason you say you don't like anybody else is because you really don't like yourself. Uh, I like myself, he said. You're the one I don't like. Well, tell me some things about yourself that you like. He glared at her. I, I like you, she said. I think you have lots of good qualities, but I want you to tell me things that you like about yourself. I, I, I can't talk anymore, he said. Why not? Oh, I I'm sick. The doctor said I can't talk. The more I talk, the sicker I get. Oh, that sounds serious. It, it is. I probably said too much already and it's your fault. I'll probably throw up. Oh, Carla nodded. Mm, don't say another word, she said quietly. We'll just sit together in silence. Sometimes people can learn a lot about each other just by sitting together in silence. She locked her mouth shut and then opened it to swallow the key. You're weird, said Bradley. Oh, a lot of people tell me that, she, she admitted, and then she put her finger to her lips. They sat together in silence. Bradley shifted in his chair. His eyes darted restlessly around the room. He put his hands behind his head and leaned back, and then he brought his hands out in front of him and folded them, and then he unfolded them. He didn't like sitting together in silence. He thought she was probably learning too much about him. Oh, I, I can probably talk a, a little bit, he said. No, I, I don't want you to get sick, said Carla. I, I like you too much. Well, the doctor says I'm supposed to talk just a little, just not a lot. All right, shall we talk about school? No. The doctor says, if I talk about school, I'll die. Carla frowned. Oh, that's a problem, she said. See, as a part of my job, I I'm supposed to help you do better in school. But how can I help you if we can't even talk about it? Bradley put his fingers to his chin, and he thought about it. I know, he said. Just tell everybody that, that you tried to help me, but I wouldn't let you. Tell them that I was too mean and nasty. That's it. Tell them... Tell them I said I'd spit on you. Oh, no, I couldn't say that about you, said Carla. You're too nice. Oh, they'll believe you, he assured her. Oh, it doesn't matter whether they believe me or not, said Carla. I'd know it was a lie. So? 
So when you tell a lie, the only person you're lying to is yourself. He didn't see anything wrong with that. If you're only lying to yourself and you know it's a lie, then it doesn't matter. Well, I just wish I, I knew why a smart kid like you just keeps failing. Well, it's because Mrs. Ebel doesn't like me, said Bradley. Shh, said Carla, don't talk about it. Well, I, I can probably talk about school just a little bit without dying, he said. Okay, Carla said hesitantly, but as soon as you feel even a little bit like dying, let me know and we'll stop. They talked about school for about 15 minutes before Bradley felt like dying. Carla pointed out that the same questions that were on the test were also on his homework assignments. She suggested that if he did his homework, the test might be easy for him. Oh, the tests are easy, he told her. I, I could get a hundred if I wanted. I I'm the oldest kid in class and I answer all the questions wrong on purpose. You want to know what I think, said Carla. I think you would like to get good grades. I think that the only reason you say you want to fail is because you're afraid to try. You're afraid that even if you try, you'll still fail. Oh, I'm not afraid of anything, said Bradley. I, I think you're afraid of yourself, said Carla, but you shouldn't be. I have lots of confidence in you, Bradley. I know you'd do so well if only you'd try. I, I can help you. We can help each other. We can try together. It was then that he told her he couldn't talk about school anymore or else he'd die. She thanked him for talking about it as much as he had. You were very brave, she said. She suggested that for their next meeting, that he make a list of topics to discuss so that they wouldn't have to risk talking about school again. Is that homework, he asked. No, she assured him. You don't even have to put your name at the top. Good, said Bradley. He was glad it wasn't homework. It was time to return to class. Thank you for sharing so much with me today, Carla said to him. I enjoyed your visit very much. She held out her hand. He stuck his hands in his pocket and he walked out of her office. Chapter 22. All week, Bradley worked on his list of topics to discuss with Carla. It's not homework, he kept telling himself. In fact, it's the opposite of homework. Because if I think of some good topics, then we won't have to talk about homework. He didn't scribble during class. He listened closely to what Mrs. Ebel and the other kids said in order to get ideas for his list. He took it with him wherever he went. At recess, he kept his eyes and ears open, constantly on the lookout for a new topic. The other kids were meaner to him than they had ever been before. They were no longer afraid of him. They called him names, and when he didn't do anything about it, they called him more names. A fourth grade boy who wanted to show off to his friends ran up to him and said, You're not even a human. You're a monster. You're a monster from outer space. The boy ran away. But Bradley didn't chase him. He added three new topics to his list. Humans, monsters, outer space. Monday was Halloween. Most of the kids brought costumes, which they were allowed to put on at lunch. Brian, one of Jeff's friends, didn't bring a costume. So he borrowed a black magic marker from Mrs. Ebel and colored a circle around his eye. When he came back from lunch, he told everyone he was Bradley Chalkers. While everyone laughed, Bradley busily worked on his list. It covered both sides of three sheets of paper. Number one, trees that lose their leaves. Number two, gold stars. Number three, chalk. Number four, tape. Number five, are chickens really afraid? Number six, why people laugh? Number seven, why does it feel like to, what does it feel like to be shot in the leg? Number eight, pencils. Number nine, pencil sharpeners. Number 10, accidents. Number 11, coffee. Number 12, military school. Number 13, canes. Number 14, basketball. Number 15, friends. Number 16, enemies. Number 17, hopscotch. Number 18, dodgeball. Number 19, foursquare. Number 20, one potato. Number 21, two potato. 
22, three potato, 23, four. 24, five potato, 25, six potato, 26, seven potato, 27 more, 28 less, 29, nothing at all. Number 30, what's it like to be in jail? Number 31, good boys. Number 32, bad boys. Number 33, breakfast, 34, lunch, 35, dinner. Number 36, have you ever been to the White House? 37, who shot my father? 38, why did he get away? 39, peanut butter and jelly. 40, gold stars. 41, black eyes. 42, fighting. 43, girls with big mouths. 44, what's it like inside a girl's bathroom? 45, saying hello. 46, reflexes. 47, hate. 48, when will I be able to grow a beard? 49, things that smell bad. 50, things you like about yourself. 51, things you don't like about yourself. 52, things nobody likes about yourself. 53, things you don't like about anybody else. 54, gold stars. 55, does my head look like a chili bowl? 56, closets. 57, hiding spaces. Hiding places. 58, dreaming. 59, bad dreams. 60, I wish I could fly. 61, kids with glasses. 62, glasses you drink from. 63, why people like some people and hate other people. 64, breaking things. 65, I wish I was invisible. 66, crybaby. 67, what happens to you when you grow old? 68 humans, 69 monsters, 70 outer space, 71, why is Halloween a holiday? 72 pirates, 73 princesses, 74 ghosts, 75, what happens when you die? 76, what if you were never born? 77, can someone else be you? 78, can you be, can you be someone else? 79, if I was someone else, I wouldn't make fun of me. 80, magic, 81 markers. He didn't go trick-or-treating that evening. Though Ronnie and Bartholomew did, the other animals gave them lots of candy. I'm making a list of topics to talk about with my counselor. He told them, do you have any ideas? How about rabbits, suggested Ronnie. That's a good one, said Bradley. He added rabbits to his list. Bears, said Bartholomew. That's a good one too. Claudia, Claudia barged into his room. Bradley quickly shoved his list under his pillow on his bed. How about what dad's going to do to you when he finds out you're flunking? She asked. That's a good topic. What are you talking about? Asked Bradley. The list. What list? Oh, I don't know, said Claudia. She slowly wandered toward the bed and then lunged for his pillow. Bradley dived for it too, but Claudia beat him to it. She held the list above her head and she read it. And as she looked at each new page, she cracked up laughing. What's so funny, he demanded. Hey, <laughs> your list. Well, what's wrong with it? This isn't the kind of stuff you talk about with a counselor. Well, how do you know? Chalk, asked Claudia. What can you say about chalk? A lot, he insisted. Claudia laughed, one potato, two potato? Your counselor's going to be mad when she sees this. Give it to me. Yes, she answered as if she had a question. Yes, what? Yes, your head does look like a chili bowl. <laughs> she laughed, shut up. Who shot my father, read Claudia? How's she going to know that? Bradley shrugged. Claudia gave him back the list. You wrote gold stars three times. She said, shaking her head. Bradley grabbed it from her hand and looked at what he had written. That's the stupidest list I've ever seen, said Claudia. Your counselor's not going to want to talk about anything on that list. You don't know her, he replied. She'll talk about anything I want to talk about. She listens to me. She likes me. No, she doesn't, scoffed Claudia. That's just her job. She walked out of his room laughing. Bradley watched her go. Then he added two new topics to his list, sisters and jobs. Tears filled his eyes as he tried to think of another topic. He crossed off two of the gold stars. Then he crumpled the list into a ball and he threw it in his trash basket. All right, guys, that ends chapter 22. What'd you think about this list that he had going? pretty interesting. It was a pretty long list too. 
Um, do you think he'll talk about some of those things with, with um, Carla, the counselor? What do you think? Um, and you can probably tell he's kind of sad, isn't he? When he starts crying at the end and then he throws his whole list away. So he probably isn't as tough as he wants people to think he is. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the story. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Give me, uh, leave me some few com a few comments in Google Classroom. Talk to you later. Bye.